let's go ahead and review the Arnold Palmer Invitational. So again, we're reviewing the Arnold Palmer Invitational. One thing I want you to note, take a look at this column here. This is our bucket system for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. The Ys look at your top 10 golfers for that week's tournament. So obviously last week, looks at all the golfers that fit inside these buckets, does a count here, and depending on what my projections were versus the count, it will deem it either successful or not successful. And when you take a look at all of these, we have Ys for 35 out of 36 buckets. Now, this bucket here is also a Y. The reason that it isn't, that it doesn't show on there, is because I haven't written code in there to put the two-point buffer we typically do in our projections. If you watch any of my preview videos, I always say we want a two-point buffer. We always round down whenever we possibly can with that buffer. But if you already round down to zero, then the next, like the max projection then goes to two. So we'll never have a projection lower than zero to two, unless there's only one golfer in that bucket. Otherwise, it's always zero to two for the projection. That means 36 out of 36 buckets were correct. Um, sorry, little critter um, distracting me. So we have 36 out of 36 buckets correct which means more likely one, the sweet spot optimal was really close to taking down a GPP or not so much a GPP, but being the optimal lineup or really close to beating the optimal lineup. And I'll get into that right now. We might as well talk about what the optimal lineup was versus the GPP winner. Your optimal lineup left $1,600 on the table, 1,600. That's, again, I don't advocate for that. I think it's, it's difficult to do. Um, $1,600 is, is, it's challenging because you, you introduce so many different combinations of lineups. So I, I never advocate for that. I always say leave no more than five to $600 on the table. But your optimal lineup included Tyrrell Hatton, Patrick Cantley, Rory McIlroy. So let's do this a different way. 10K in Rory McIlroy, 9K in Patrick Cantley, 8K in Tyrrell Hatton, Harris English at seven, and then two 6K golfers. That is what we talked about last uh, in the preview video during the pass optimal and GPP winning lineups. So again, the criticism as to why look at past when we should look at future? Well, because you can find trends as to what works at certain tournaments. And obviously at the API, having two 6K golfers was probably the, the thing to do. Now your GPP winning lineup left $500 on the table, which is awesome. Uh, usually you don't see a lot of money left on the table for GPP winning lineups. That scored 537.5. If I didn't mention the optimal lineup, that scored 576. So there's a 40 point difference between GPP winning lineup and the optimal, which if I say anything within 50 points. I think that's good. Um, I'll take that back. If the total score for your DraftKings lineup is less than 500, then that 50 point difference isn't that impressive because a low scoring event just, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't allow for a lot of scoring. Put it that way and therefore your gaps are going to be uh, smaller as well. Anyways, this was over 500, so a 50 point, you know, being within 50 points of the optimal was pretty good. So the GPP winning lineup, that's awesome. Uh within 50 points and, you know, only left $500 $500 on the table. Now before I get into the sweet spot optimal, it is worth mentioning marquee tee times. Uh and and basically what I want to do is review the sweet spot optimal to show you how it compares to the GPP winning lineup. Because when I go through every single week and I discuss the buckets, I discuss the marquee tee times, all that stuff, there are rules that are, imp that are applied. And if you apply those rules to your lineup building, well, first of all, is it successful, right? That's gotta be the number one thing you gotta think about. Why would I take your 
you know, your strategy to heart. Well, let me prove it to you. So with the marquee tea times, if you forgot what this is, I'm rank ordering the groups based off of the sweet spot score that I provide, the sweet spot rank. So group one last week was John Rahm, Xander Shoffley, and Colin Morikawa. Their group score together was 22 points. This is the ranking, right? Rom was number one, Shoffley's four, so that's five. You know, you add that up, five, plus 17 is 22. Then we look at the next group. That's Rory McIlroy, Tyrrell Hatton, and Max Homa. You add all this up, 18 plus six, that's 24. So it's two points behind this one, but when we rank order them, you can see group one versus group two, so on and so forth. The marquee tee times, in my opinion, are your top nine groups. Uh, and really, I look at the top seven. That's why you can see the dark green uh, highlighted with their sweet spot rank versus the light green down here in group eight and group nine. But I still like to include them because, well, first of all, the optimizer only allows me to have nine groups. So why, why, why wouldn't I utilize nine groups? I like to use all the group. Like I would like to look at every single group, but the optimizer doesn't allow me to do that. So we look at the really the top seven, but the top nine. And the rule when it comes to the marquee tee times is grab somewhere between two to four golfers from the marquee tee times. Remember, there are nine of them. So grab two to four from the nine groups. And then also on top of that is don't grab more than one golfer from a marquee tee time. If you do, don't grab more than two because there's rarely ever three. Like, I think it's only been one time in the last 76, last 80 weeks that we've had three golfers in the same group. I could be lying. That could, I, I, I just, I remember that happening at like a lesser event, like a Ras Punta Cana or something like that. But it rarely happens. And I rather play the odds. So I don't do that. And likewise, you rarely see two golfers in the same group in the optimal lineup. This week we did. So... It gets proven wrong. However, still, I'm showing you, even if you follow the sweet spot process, there is going to be success to be had. So, marquee tee times, remember, grab two to four golfers from here, and then don't grab more than one golfer from each group. So, really, you have nine groups. You have the potential to grab up to nine golfers. Obviously, you can only build lineups with six of them, or, you know, with, with six golfers. So, you just look at six separate groups and, and do that. But I, again, I max it out at four because I'm playing numbers. I never seen more than four golfers from the marquee tee time in an optimal lineup. So why do that? You had four golfers in the GPP winning lineup. You only had two golfers in the optimal Rory and Tyrrell Hatton. And then there are three golfers in the sweet spot optimal. And really the sweet spot optimal is me taking the optimizer from last week modifying it to add in the DK scores, which you can see right here. The metric right here. I'm only grabbing like the top 30 golfers, you know, that scored that scored well at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I'm using all their bucket information. I'm still applying all of the marquee tee times. I'm, I'm applying the, the wave stacks. I'm, a, I'm still applying all the buckets here. And it creates me the most optimal sweet spot, optimal lineup. The most optimal sweet spot lineup. It scored 562.5. Um, and it left $300 on the table. So actually, that's a different one. Uh, if I were to move this to 49,000 and rerun this, you're going to see um, it's just slightly better. I think it's 564.5. Uh, it does include two 6K golfers in Kurt Kitayama and Davis Riley. And it's Patrick Cantley, Tyrrell Hatton, Scotty Scheffler, and Scotty, or uh, Keegan Bradley. I was going to call him Scotty Bradley. Uh, so following the sweet spot process, you're still scoring a boatload of points. You're not leaving a lot of money on the table. We're also grabbing three marquee tee time golfers. You know, again, I'm sending that two to four. I did change my stacks for waves. Five being the max for the PM because I think there was a PM AM, you know, advantage. So I, I didn't want to grab six. I did say, hey, you can grab up to five and then you could grab two. Now I could change this for you guys. This is how I normally have it four and three. Because there's always a slight advantage to the PM AM wave. 
And I could rerun this and maybe we still beat the optimal or the GPP we line up. And we do. We actually score way more points. Not way more. Why is that different? Sometimes the optimizer doesn't make sense because 567.5 is higher than 564.5. Weird. Either way, we still beat, we still take down the GBP. 67.5. See, what was the optimal again? Um, wrong. Yeah, this is the right one. 576. So we're nine points behind it. Um, either way, the sweet spot optimal, I have two of them, 564 and 562. Those were the two lineups you saw minus the one I just showed you. And they're highlighted here in green. The red font indicates the different lineup. So the green highlighted um, salary, the fill, I should say, would be this sweet spot optimal, which would score 564, but left $700 on the table. And then if you sub up from Riley to Harris English, you can see your 400 point boost, but you lose two points. Well, GPP winning lineup scored 537.5. Sweet Spot Optimal scored 564.5. Sweet Spot 1, I should say. Sweet Spot 2 scored 562.5. And of course, if we change up the uh, just the wave splits down here, we somehow score three more points. So that makes no sense to me. I don't, I don't get why it didn't just already look for those golfers. It doesn't make, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, so yeah, following the Sweet Spot process to the T, by the way. There's the no shortcuts. You, if you grab my optimizer and say you built, I uh, think one of my followers reached out to me and asked me about um, how do we get to the sweet spot optimal? How, how, you know, when you review this every single week, how do we get there? It quite frankly comes down to anchoring around certain golfers. You know, last week, I really wanted to anchor around Rory, but I did so well at the Honda Classic by opening up my ownership to creating all the different combinations I can at the top. So I included a 10K with a 9K golfer, you know, X amount of times. And I did that for each 10 9K combination uh, with each 10 9K golfer. So it came up with like, you know, I created 118 lineups with, you know, four times the 10 nine combinations you can do. I know that's going to be confusing to some of you guys. Um, I will go over that in the strategy video this week. I did it in last week's video as well. And I did it in the week before that. So because that strategy worked out so well for me at the Honda, I did it also at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Now I did want to go hundred percent on Rory McIlroy and really hundred percent to me is going 70%. You know, I'm going overweight on Rory still always leave the different combinations open. I just don't go as equal with all of them. I go really heavy with like a Rory and then a 9K golfer. Um, so basically what that would look like is, let's say I had just the regular optimizer up and it's like, you know what? I really like Rory. Where is Rory? Rory's right here. He's in group two. Well, I can't play Tyrrell Hatton because he's also in group two. I need to find me another golfer to anchor around. Well, usually I go to a 9K golfer. That's just where my brain naturally goes to. Last week, Rory and Justin Thomas were my two guys that I, I would have anchored around in all of my lineups because I had no faith in Patrick Cantlay. But that's how you get there. So if you were to anchor around Patrick Cantlay and Rory McIlroy, you can already see they're in here. Uh, maybe not this lineup, but if I were to do that and just build this lineup, that's how we get to the sweet spot optimal. You know, you would have had to have been, well, again, so the optimizer is just, oh, you don't want to know why. So 543 still takes down that GPP because the GPP scored 537. This is this way because I changed the waves. The waves are different. So if I go back down here and I kind of re-update this, but by the way, this is the lineup I would have built. I, I would have been cool with this lineup. Jason Day in my lineup, I talked about him in my, my strategy video. That would have been easy to do. 
I have two 7K golfers and a 6K. And I talked about Kurt Kitayama last week, just like I'm sure a lot of other content creators, but I liked him here. Said he hit the ball far, um, has the length to compete at this golf course. So he was in a, a few of my lineups. I don't know how many. Looks like 2%. This is showing my actual ownership, 2%. So not a ton of my lineups. If I did say that, my bad. I apologize. 33% Rory. That was good. He was my highest uh, 10K golfer. Rom was at 22, or Scheffler, 25. So that's how my 10K and above kind of shook out. So this is how you get to, I guess I have to rerun it, right? This is how you get to your sweet spot optimal, is just locking in those golfers. And I, I yeah, this is really interesting. Okay, so I guess thinking about the optimizer, how it calculates things, it goes through different checks and balances. Because if I remove these two golfers and rerun this, I'm going to get a whole different combination of golfers. Yeah. And it's still going to... Okay, so it includes Cantlay and Scheffler. It doesn't include Rory. But why? I don't get it. I didn't even realize that um, Rory wasn't in the sweet spot optimal. Okay, so this is your combination. It wouldn't have been Rory. You wouldn't have put... Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Rory's not in the sweet spot optimal. Crazy. I wouldn't have thought that. Rory scored, what, 94.5 points, and Scotty sh scored 91. So it wasn't so much you needed Rory. You could have went with Scotty. Three points isn't a big deal. Good to know. So you would have had to have went Scotty and then Patrick Cantley, which I would never have gone. That wouldn't have been me. Okay. I'm I miss I I looked at that wrong. That will cover your pass optimal and GPP winning lineups. Actually, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's cut that out. That will cover the review of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. 